What's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight With, and today I am joined by somebody I am incredibly excited to speak with. If you know anything about me, you know I am a fan of Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series, and this season of the Contender Series is probably the most international season we've had yet, and by far, from the UK, some of the most exciting talents, and today's guest is no exception to the pecking order, one of the most exciting fighters to be fighting on this season of the Contender Series. I am privileged to be joined by the Pride of the North, Adam Bramhold. Adam, thank you so much for your time, brother. A privilege to speak with you. How are you feeling first and foremost? I like that. Pride of the North. I like that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Mate. brilliant. Uh, camp's going really well so far. Um, everything's going according to plan. Getting proper, proper shape for this. So, yeah, it's all going well. No, yeah, definitely. And when you talk about just a long time coming, it feels like this contender series shot an opportunity in August. It's just a massive, I think, accomplishment for the UK this season alone. You know, so many amazing fighters from the UK getting an opportunity finally to fight for that coveted UFC contract. Talk to me about the emotions of finally seeing the hard work come to fruition and kind of how the opportunity came about. Yeah, um, I I think first and foremost, like you said, I think the UFC are giving the UK guys a big opportunity like there's a lot of us on it from different weight classes and stuff like that um so yeah great to see everyone on there you know it's been a little bit i say it's a little bit been a little bit more difficult for the uk's type uk fighters to get in to the ufc recently but they've not been going the the conventional route of getting straight in from certain uh wins and certain promotions so it's great to have us all on on there because you know a lot of the uk guys they they have good fighting styles you know and that's what you want on contender series from an emotional perspective about, you know, finally getting the fight, it was great because, more great because of, not because of like all the years of training and stuff like that, but like this year for me, uh, it's been like a big risk, a uh, big waiting game. You know, we had the idea that we might be uh, in line for it. Um, we just get the management they sent off. A selection of fighters to uh you know sean shelby and people like that um and it was kind of like we said that in april and it was like getting to the point where like you know we might need to look at something else but i didn't really want to and like my coach like it was his he was like look just sit we'll just sit and i did turn down a few big opportunities in the hope of this so when we finally i finally woke up and i'd had the email uh, saying, can you fight this guy? We were just like, yeah, straight away. And it was just, it was like a big relief because we'd not missed opportunities. We've got the the golden opportunity that we wanted. No, yeah, and you talk about basically, you know, the waiting game for the UFC is probably one of the most risky, you know, calls. I know a lot of fighters, you know, who yeah. feel like they've done enough. They sit out. They say, okay, let's wait and see what happens. And finally getting that call, just all the weight basically lifted off your shoulders and now the ultimate task in front of you. And like you talk about, no shortage of accomplishments in this sport. I know for you, probably one of the most exciting fighters in the UK, in my honest opinion, on the regional scene right now. You know, you've got, you've got a fair array of finishes from both submissions to knockouts to TKOs. You've just... You've been one of the more exciting fighters to watch because you always deliver and you always finish fights for the most part. Talk to me a little bit about seeing the love from the UK community. I know, especially British MMA scene, you know, including you and a lot of other, a lot of the other fighters on this season of the Contender Series in his coverage. What's it been like to see the love kind of pouring out for you and also being able to to live by the sword and die by the sword? Because I know your nickname Samurai, but your fights are a representation of that. Yeah, I mean, in the UK MMA scene, like I want as a part of my journey in this sport is to bring people into this sport because it's not like, you know, like you guys in the States and in Europe uh, have these massive crowds and everyone is so involved in the sport. Like even when I was in, in Vegas for some filming a few weeks ago, like everybody knows you, you know, <laughs> not knows me, but they know I can tell you fighters are like, Oh my God, are you here for the UFC? You're here for contenders and stuff like that. They're, they're pretty crazy about it. And like in England, it's just like, nobody, <laughs> nobody really, like from an MMA community, it's great. Um, like the uh, scene on on uh, social media is quite good. But like, it's fans that I want to bring into the sport. So when you say about me trying to deliver and entertain, which is what I always try and say, I want to be this guy that, you know, it's it's more wow than win for me. You know, so that's why I always try and at least, you know, you say live by the sword, die by the sword. Like I want to go out if I'm going to lose. I want I still want people to remember the fight. You know, it's not about getting through the fight all the time for me you know i'm here to bring people into this sport it's a spectator sport and that's that's what i want to do 
No, yeah, and I love what you mentioned there, you know, basically just leaving a lasting impression on the fan base, regardless of the result, and being able to have your footprint on the sport. And I love that you mentioned Vegas, because, you know, obviously the fighting capital of the world to some degree, you know, when you talk about coming here, everyone knows you're, if you're a fighter or not, it's kind of like fighter radar, yeah. but in the UK, kind of, you can walk the street and people wouldn't maybe realize it per se, because obviously in the UK, it's really spaced out, but I feel like right now, especially when you look at the north of the UK, it is absolutely yeah. remarkable in terms of the quality of gyms. I know you train out of Asylum Vale Tudo amongst another, uh, you know, a couple of other gyms. And then, of course, you've got Team Renegade in Birmingham. You've got, you know, Next Gen MMA in Liverpool. And then, of course, Manchester Top Team. And you've got Team yeah. Calbon. You know, the North is absolutely loaded in terms of gyms to train at. What's it been like for you to see that progression that we've gotten to a point in the past, you know, half decade or so where gyms are really being able to hold their own and produce top tier talent? And cross training has become more of a probability in the UK than ever before. Yeah, uh, I think. You, you, I mean, like, I didn't really think about it too much about the North having so much of an impact on the MMA scene. I mean, I wouldn't count Birmingham as the North. Sorry, but, um, but yeah, like you know, like you'd think as soon as soon as obviously uh, internationally, you'd think London is the capital of the UK. That's where most of the fighters are. Not the case anymore. The North holds the key to the. To so the MMA scene, I mean, we can see that, you know, Tom Aspinall's the, the heavyweight champion. You know, we'll give Murphy's Birmingham, which is the middle of the country. Um, like, you know, it's that way. And yeah, you, like you say, you've got AVT. We, we're going to have more, a load more guys going to the USA, I think, in the next couple of years. And then Manchester top team as well. And there's these great teams, obviously. Next gen, I've already got a few and it's... It is a pool of talent and it's like, you know, you go to these regional shows and you see like all their fighters are there that you don't know yet. And it's just like, it really just seems like it's pushing the MMA scene in the North, like really, really far. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to highlight is I just feel like the opportunities in the UK right now, this year alone has probably been the most opportunities we've seen come to the United Kingdom in recent memory. With the inclusion of PFL Europe, you have, of course, the Contender Series and then, you know, the Ultimate Fighter, where I know, obviously, uh, Ireland, not a part of the UK, but, like, you know, Paddy McCory on, on the Ultimate Fighter and Nathan Fletcher from Next Gen yeah. fighting in on the Ultimate Fighter. It just feels like this season as a whole and just this year as a whole has been a, a year for the UFC to really expand its horizons, you know, with the Manchester card, with the London cards that have been having pro happening prior. It feels like they've really been dipping their toes into the UK and it feels like it's a long time coming. What do you make of just seeing all of these opportunities from MMA companies and promotions and just the love that the UK is finally, it feels like it's finally all coming together for the United Kingdom. I think it's great. I, I love that um, these promotions are coming. The problem is we need to get bums on seats. And this is, uh, I think I said I said something about it the other day on my Instagram, like we need to get people to these shows because these big promotions want to conquer the UK. They want to come to the UK and sell out these arenas. But it's about getting people there. Most people in England just want to watch their mate. You know what I mean? And they were like, it's hard. They want to go watch him. They want to be like, oh, fucking smoke him. And then they want to go home and like they don't. You know, I want to make this more of a a national sport. And that's what I want. So I want loads of English guys to do as good as possible. Like, not just me. I want everyone around me in this country to do well. So we bring these shows. And that will bring more opportunities for, you know, the younger fighters up and coming and get more money pumped into the sport, into the country. And then it'll be better opportunities for us to, you know, fight in America and stuff like that. No, yeah, and I know for you, you know, training out of Asylum Veltudo, definitely one of the more, not, I feel like one of the gyms that's kind of gone under the radar in the UK as of late, of course, you've got Jack Grant, if I remember correctly, that trains out of Asylum, and, you know, you've just got a quality pool of fighters there that have really kind of been those guys that work, they don't really do the talking, they let the actions speak louder than their words. What's it been like for you to train out of Asylum and just see kind of the development in your home gym and just... Now, kind of that relief, you know, where you're not have you don't have to go over to to Manchester to MTT, or you don't have to go over to Liverpool to train for a lot of other fighters. Like every city in the UK has its almost premier hub for quality training. Yeah, I mean, ABT has been such a great team, like passing through loads of different fighters that have been there and gone, and we still have people come to us that have left. You talk about Jack Grant; he's 
obviously trained with us a lot. Um, people like Scott Asker, Danny Mitchell, my coach, was in the UFC. We've got loads of guys that, that have moved to other teams, but we've been training together like for years and years and years. The North has been a really good place to, you know, meet and train with different fighters. Especially like I found like up until like recently, but like the 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 bantamweight scene up north, like a lot of them are at top team now. But honestly, there's my weight class. There's so many good fighters knocking about, so we get to meet up and train and stuff like that. It's good. No, yeah, definitely. And I gotta mention this because I feel like there's a huge elephant in the room in terms of Adam Bramhold as the fighter, and then you've got Adam Bramhold, the person, a man of many, a man of many characters, a man of living life to the fullest. Of course. You know, you've got the infamous Valentine's Day photo with you holding, I think it was a lamb or beef heart up. Uh, I gotta <laughs> ask you. And then you've got the, the sailor uh, situation, which we won't dive too deep into. A man of, of many characters and just living life to the fullest. I gotta ask, for Adam Bramhol, what does uh, life outside of MMA look like? Just being able to, to live life to the fullest. I know you spend a lot of time with your dog and, you know, your family. What's what's kind of life look like for Adam Bramhol outside of the, the combat sports stuff? To be honest, buddy, like outside of combat sport, there isn't that much time right now. When I'm not fighting, it's great. Uh, like you say, I, I, I like, I love my dogs, you know, I spend a lot of time with them. I'm, I'm, they take up a lot of my time, I'll tell you that. I still work full time. Um, <clears throat> I focus a lot on diet and nutrition, like you say, about the heart. Like that's just a full B part. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I like, you know, I like just being like a usual normal person when I can, you know, I'll, I'll go to the pub. I like to, you know, just relax. I like to watch football and stuff like that. That's me. Like I don't, there's nothing too crazy. Fighting's crazy enough. And now, especially with um, the opportunity to travel and stuff like that, you know, like I just try and be, I just try and, and you talk about, like, you know, the social media stuff. I just try and be me. Like I don't, I'll say things, I'll, I'll say things how I think they are might be wrong half the time but i'll say it and you know like i try and help as many people as i can on there i get I, so many people talking to me through like through social media about certain things and stuff like that yeah i'm just, just going through every moment at the moment no yeah definitely and you know one thing i want to end on and just on the final note, adam i want to thank you so much for your time and i know of course not looking too far past the contender series opportunity i know once you know if you win that or if or when you win that contract you know the opportunity to continue to fight and get another fight by the end of the year is a massive possibility but you know i want to end on a segment that we do on fight wave called build a fighter which is basically you've got four categories of striking grappling iq and cardio that you've got to assign a single fighter to each category and build your dream fighter. And I know you talk about K1 style being probably one of the most exciting styles of fighting out there. And you've talked about your preferred style of fighting. I got to ask Adam Bramhold, if you had to build a fighter with those four categories, who would the fighter be? Personally, I think John Jones is the best fighter there is. Uh, so I'd probably go John. No, maybe not John Jones for striking. Who's got the strike? Who's the best striking, I think? Barbosa. I go Barbosa was the striker. I go John, probably John Jones IQ. Grappling Oliveira because I think he he makes Jiu Jitsu too exciting. Who's got the best cardio now? I don't know. Someone. Who do I want to say? Fucking hell! Let me think. Me, I think my cardio is better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no. I, can tell you, I can tell you what, that, that's a fighter that no, not a lot of people, if anyone's going to beat, you know, that's a, a hell of a fighter right there. <laughs> no, yeah, but, you know, I think, I um, if I would say, I think IQ is the most important out of all of them. Yeah. In my opinion, I think IQ is the, makes the best fighters. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, when you talk about that fighter that you just presented in front of us, John Jones, like you said, one of the greatest fighters. I don't think it's a contestable fact, you know, and on top of that, you know, just... An absolute privilege to speak with you, Adam, and pick your brain ahead of what's, you know, the biggest fight of your career. And I want to say on just one final note again, thank you so much for your time and then best of thank skill you. in the upcoming Contender Series fight. And to the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Adam Bramhold on Dana White's Contender Series this season. I don't know if we can disclose the opponent just yet, though I know if you do enough digging, you'll find the yeah, opponent. Yeah, people know, but I'm not technically allowed to say. Yeah. You know I, mean? <laughs> I know. I had a couple of other Contender Series fighters on and, you know, they all said... I can't say it, otherwise I might be out of a fight. But, you know, regardless of that, Adam, 
Best of skill in the upcoming fight, and I cannot wait to watch you perform on the Contender Series this season for the ultimate reward of the UFC contract. And to the fans at home watching, do be sure to check out Adam Bramhold on social media. Support your local fighter. It goes a long way. I will be linking his socials in the description down below. It has been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the interview. Do be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day, guys.